All right, we are here with my very good friend Rodrigo Fidelis from City Painting and Waterproofing, and I wanted to I want to bring him on a podcast because he is first of all he's a very good friend of mine. I've known him for many years from one of my very first construction sites. When I first met him, he was actually partnered up with another company. He was the project manager. He was one of the partners. They were a very small company, and I've literally observed him go from like doing little tiny tenant build outs, little tiny things, you know, probably 10 or $20,000 painting projects to several hundred thousand dollar painting projects a pop. And now he's doing over $8 million a year in painting and stucco sales. Think about that painting and stucco, which is typically not the most expensive. It's not like concrete. It's not like framing. It's not like these high ticket trades. He's doing eight freaking million dollars in a year in sales. And I want to bring him on because he probably knows more than I do <laughs> on how to sell construction jobs and painting jobs. And I want to, I want to, I want to learn from him and I want him to tell me and you guys on what he's doing to take the, you know, what he did to take his business that far. So without further ado, I want to introduce my very good friend, Rodrigo. How are you, man? Good. How are you, Dan? Thanks, Thanks for, I'm, I'm glad. for the invitation of, uh, uh, you know, speak a little bit about ourselves. I appreciate <laughs> it. Awesome. I'm, I'm excited that you're here with us. Um, so, uh, this, so, so you're, so, you know, you're aware, obviously we have our YouTube channel and, and so believe it or not, what you're going to teach us today, what you're going to share with us, it's not just for me, but it's going to be, uh, everybody who watches our, our, our channel and stuff like that, they're going to benefit from this because like, I don't know that many painting contractors that have hit like, you know, $8 million. That's a very, I just want you to know, that's a very big achievement. A lot, a lot of my clients are like, like they're struggling to even hit the first million and you're doing eight and you're. The, you know, obviously you have your team, but you're the you're you're not a one man operation, but you're the head. It's not like you're this big corporation with a bunch of people. It's you know, so to the fact that you're there is it's amazing. So you know, why don't you introduce yourself? Tell us where you came from, what you're you know, how you got into painting, kind of give us the background. Sure. Um, well, my name is uh, Rodrigo Fidelis. I'm the president of a company CD Painting and Waterproofing. Um, as uh, as Daniel mentioned before, like a long time ago, I started up just with the painting. Um, the company was kind of like a, uh, the first year it sold like a four hundred thousand dollars. The second year, the second year we sold eight hundred thousand dollars. We always be around around that range, but it was a very small facility, as you mentioned, Daniel. And we, but the, you know, the, the small facility, the small overhead, the payment still was good. I was able to make like over over hundred thousand dollars back back very right back in the days. Uh, but when we start, it's, uh, it's, a way, it's where we learn everything. Like, uh, you being an estimating slash project manager slash office manager slash, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, owner. So it was, it was a very tough time. Um, as far as, uh, but it was good. It was good. Like I learned and like nowadays I know how to, uh, how to manage every section of my company. You know, that was the hard way. So that's what I that's what I came from. Along the way, you get to know like uh, construction companies. Uh, you get to know like uh, project managers. Uh, you learn more trades uh, with all the videos, the the uh, YouTube, Instagram. You can reach out the world easily than back in the days when we didn't have none of the stuff. So uh, you know you you get to learn. So I got into a waterproofing because. My clients is sort of a kind of like stabbing me and say, I need this done, find a way to do it. And in the end, like I try to help them, but they have no idea. They help me a lot. So, <laughs> yeah. And I had to do it. And, and I learned on a, on a harder way. And I say, yeah, I mean, definitely this is, a, you know, the avenue is a little better than painting. So over a uh, little down the road, like I kind of like um, uh, I spread my, my partnership nothing wrong with my partner very honest guy you met him um and um um we learn a lot with each other i can uh i can deny it that's awesome and yeah no it's it's just a mentality i yeah. want to attack like another another phase of construction and and you know it's just a different goals different mentality but it's nothing wrong with that and you know he's kind of like a golden age like around 49 years old and mm -hmm. he he wasn't that hungry uh, like I was, and uh, I respect that. I really do. I'm getting about that age now, and I see what uh, uh, he always talking about. So anyway, 
long story short, I can we we actually went a separate way, and I opened this uh, this company, and it's only uh, the the first year. That's funny, man. The first year we sold eight hundred thousand dollars. The second year we sold two point eight million dollars. The wow. third year we sold almost five million dollars. The fourth wow. year we sold eight million dollars. This year we sold pretty much like. Four million dollars now. <laughs> yeah. So we're in we're in March. So you're three and a half months in, and you've already you're already hit half of what you did last year. That's crazy. That's incredible. And, uh, and as I mentioned to you, um, the the sales that we uh, we calculated here, it's the money that comes through the company. It's not the kind of like actually the job. I can sell a job for three million dollars, but it's going to start only September. For us, it doesn't count. So yeah, you're you're calculating the actual money coming in the bank. The the Correct. checks Correct. that's what matters what do you uh, the, the, the invoice is paid <laughs> what do you have lined up in contracts like your pipe we, uh, we got a lot we got a lot we got we got jobs sold for for the rest of the year already so, oh that's, that's amazing yeah even i mean uh some some of the jobs like uh you probably would take uh if you started like in july or something like that it's, it's uh, two years but you know how it goes on the painting like uh, if, if you if you have like a 20 drywall crew um mm-hmm. you only probably need like i don't know three painters yeah. whatever they do in three four weeks we do it like in a two three days so uh um in a job of uh, uh actually i don't know million dollar job of painting with all the trades you go like you know doing faces and stuff and you don't need more than than three four people uh, yeah. If it's really, really good painting. So you're probably okay. going to take like a, a two years. So I'll say we have a job sold for the rest of the year, but definitely it's going to continue a little piece by piece by 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 the beginning of next year as well. So you're basically booked all the way through the year and then a little bit of next year. Yeah, pretty much. Crazy. Yeah. And I always tell all my people, like, you got to build a pipeline because in, in construction, like there's waves. And then there's times that you're really busy and you stop bidding and then, or you slow down the bidding. And then when, when you finish that wave of jobs, then you run out of jobs and you're freaking out because then your crews leave. And it seems like you have your team consistently bidding, consistently submitting proposals so that you're, you're basically so set up that you know where you're going to be at already in 2025. Correct. I uh, watched one of your videos, uh, very interesting videos in, and you, you you know, us, like uh, you, you have the same mentality as I do, same mentality. Um, you need to be sort of like, uh, um, try to be very close to the people that you do business with. Like, uh, for example, then, and, and, and I saw like you, th- this video and definitely, uh, it's, uh, what we are, um, what we do, it's, uh, we, we already have construction company that gave us constantly work. Mm-hmm. What you want to do, it's deliver, deliver, deliver to those companies. Like yeah. you got to be, it's the people that put the, the, the food on your table and, and you don't want to let them down. So we actually do not exchange new clients and we say, oh, new clients, let's do everything that we can. No, we do this for the for the old people, the, the, the people that we grow with. We don't want to lose them. So this is the reason we have a constant work, man. Like uh, this is a number, this is not number one key. There's nothing wrong to be friends with your clients. Um, you know, you need to learn how to separate the, uh, the, 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 your friendship. What I say is kind of like, a, uh, with all the respect, uh, with your client, he's your client. Like you got to treat him like, a, uh, he needs something, get it done. Yeah. So I think this is the key because we got, a, we got a lot of work, man. We got a lot of work. Yeah. No, that's so. awesome. But so, yeah, I, one of the things I'm always like preaching about is everything that we do revolves around this concept of building a recurring business because what I see a lot of contractors do and a lot of my clients like when they come to us and I think I want to say like 90% of contractors what they do is they just submit bids and they cross their fingers and maybe they call a few times but there's no skill there's no sales process there's no prospecting there's no relationship building and I always say that uh, people are going to buy based on either your price your reputation Mm -hmm. or your relationship correct so like when they don't know you, like, let's say, let's say we're dealing with a new guy or not a new guy, but let's say you're like a smaller contractor and you're coming in and you want to build a, you want to start working with a GC or, or even if you're a GC trying to get in with an architecture firm, a developer, it's the same concept. You, you want to, they don't know who you are. So you have no reputation and they don't have a relationship with you. So the only thing you can lead on is price. So I always right. tell my people, Hey, listen, if you know that just come in at a low cost 
win the job. Now I'm not saying under cost. I'm not saying do anything shady where like a lot of, I know a lot of people do that stuff, but I'm talking about like, give them the trial, right? Give them the trial that, you know, like everybody says, I've been in business for 30 years. I have the best quality. That's everybody's freaking sales pitch. So mm -hmm. forget that sales pitch. It's not unique. So what you want to come in is you want to say, Hey, listen, this is my price. I'm not even going to talk about my quality. This is my price. I know I have the best quality. Let me prove it to you. Boom. You go in, win the job, knock it out of the park, hit a home run. And I always say that once you get in, since you're starting to work with the project managers and the superintendents, you're like behind enemy lines. And now the guys that are calling you, they're not just the estimators or the bid coordinators or the secretaries. They're the actual guys signing right. the checks. And then I'm sure like you, you tell me the guys that hire you, obviously you got to bid the jobs, but now with these established relationships, don't you kind of go straight to the guy that is always like that you're always working with? The right. They're, they're clients of us. They, they don't even shop around. They just go with us. Yeah, they, they, they trust us. They 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 know we're not take advantage of whatsoever. So that's uh, uh it, it doesn't matter uh, what kind of uh, facility that we are we are bidding on. Well, we go by how hard it is to execute the job. We don't take advantage because we're the only bidders. Or whatever we just do the bid like uh, how supposed to. Um, what you're saying it's a, a very true thing. Um, I have a very similar strategy for this. You know, commercial, it's, it, I, I, I admire the people that go to Facebook, try to sell the work, go to uh, Instagram. I got nothing wrong with that. Me personally, we, we don't even uh, advertise anything because uh, when we do, when we put something on Facebook, when we put something on, a, on, a, on Instagram, believe it or not, our phone just don't stop blowing. And people call and whatever. It's 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 not the fact that we don't want a more client. We want a more client with responsibility. So anyway, um, what I always tell people, like even commercial, it's it's exactly what you you're talking about. If you don't have a friendship relationship, what is going to sell the job? It's your knowledge, and and the price. And this is what I always talking to my estimating people. If uh, back in the days, and and I'm not telling you this because people they're watching us or something like that to follow what I'm saying. I don't do it because as I say, I prefer to make the, this group of a friendship and how I work for them. If I lose one or two accounts, which I, uh, uh, it's very hard. Like they, they know we're on top of the stuff, but if we do, we gotta go find another client. Yeah. Of course, we're gonna get another client eventually in the future, but 99% of the time they come and recommend. But this is my tip for whoever wants to go hunt for the job. Like your knowledge and the price, it's gonna sell the job. If you don't know anybody of that. The, the reason why is like, for example, you're gonna go to, you're gonna do a repaint on a clinic. Mm -hmm. And if you describe everything that you're gonna do on a, on a clinic, like a Mr. Daniel, see the estimate, blah, 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 blah. Um, so you know the, the the existing doors is made of the stain. So you could, if we if we apply some sort of a, a chemical primer, it's not going to be a zero. You see, blah, whatever whatever your knowledge, you can explain how you're going to drive your client to that estimate. And mm -hmm. and you know, and people going to look at it and say, Whoop, this guy knows something. Yeah, and he's probably going to call your attention. Yeah, and then he started looking for you. So you you, you better have like a. a uh, a website, um, a portfolio, or I don't know, some recommendation letter, whatever that you can send to this guy that he can yeah. trust you, you know, and, and, and most of the time, uh, um, there's no reason for, there's no reason in construction not to people really trust you what you're going to do because, you know, you're going to get your payment like a down the road. If, yeah. if they kick you out of the job, you, they, you, you're going to get out of the job like with you, yeah. for sure. Yeah. And that's, and what you're saying is, so like, like when I would go visit clients um, before when I was in commercial drywall, um, we would, I'm not saying that I'm this like super genius expert, but I have taken the time to understand metal framing and the gauges and the mills and all the stuff that's on the cut sheets that nobody reads, you know, that nobody like looks into. I know I, I on my trade, I've made myself an expert because I wanted to convey that. And so like when I would go visit people, it's not that I would try to sound smart. It's just that you know, you shake hands and I, I think I'm a, you know, like I'm a personable guy. Like, you know, I'm not like the super technical, you know, robot guy. Some people are like that, but I'm so like when the things, when, when the things will come up on the job, it's like, yeah, so we're going to use 20 gauge and the way we're going to do it is we're going to put the kickers and boom, boom, boom. And just by the way, people talk, sometimes it gives the sense of like, oh, these people do know what they're talking about. And, and I always tell all my people, the only way you win jobs is by visiting the clients because 
everybody wants to be through email. They want to just use Blue Book and Dodge, and they just want to use the, the the email as you know, see attached proposal. Boom. And I always say, think about this. You're asking a guy to give you a three hundred or a five hundred thousand dollar contract or a million dollar contract. They don't know who you are. They've never met you. They've never shaken your hand before. None of the, none of that. How the heck do you think that somebody is gonna just decide? Hey, let me just give this random internet random guy a contract. Like, let me just give him 500 grand. Here you go. You can't, you have to visit them, get to know them. And that, what you're saying about relaying the, the knowledge, you can't really do that over the phone. And you can't do that in, and you can't really do that in, you know, through email. You have to kind of be there, shake hands. And I always say small talk wins jobs. Looking people eye to eye, shaking hands. What do you got coming up? Boom, boom, boom. And it's funny because every time I would go visit a client, they would always be like, oh, um, you know, or I, I would drop in with my old boss you know him, Paolo, I think you know him. And we would go and we'd be like, oh, we just wanted to come by. We we're in the area, wanted to meet you guys. Oh, you know, great to meet you guys. By the way, we got these other three jobs that we're about to do the buyout for. You want, you want to bid them? And I'm like, of course I want to bid them. And we will win jobs like that because we would just kind of be in the right place at the right time because we would just go visit people. And then obviously I was a little bit more of the knowledge technical part. So when the people would talk, they were like, you know, he was more of the I'm in the field. I know what I'm doing, blah, blah, blah. And I was the more like, you know, tech savvy computer guy. So like that combination was really good for these guys. And together we would win jobs like that. And, and so I know, what I know what you're saying. Now I have a question for you. Sure. It's going to prove my theory. I think it's going to prove my theory. If not, I'm going to learn something new. How many repeat clients do you have that you can consistently bank that you're going to get repeat work for not not the new guys like not the guys that you just started working with this year but like the people that you're like i've been working with them for a long time and they're my boys and i know that work's going to come in for sure how many would you say you have <clears throat> i would say around 10 10 boom that's exactly so when i did 7 million with coroni we were doing, we had like five or six repeat clients. And obviously we got a bunch of contracts from like one or two a year from a bunch of companies, but we had like five or six of them and you're at 8 million and you have 10. So it's kind of like the, in the same pattern. So yeah, you, we, 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 um, like a, for example, we just, uh, made a, a friendship with, um, and, and we're doing this work between stock and painting. It was at almost $2 million. Um, uh, but this, this guy only got this type of work. He already have another one set up for us to start in, in August this year. The you know, I buy out the contracts and stuff like that. So like we have a 10 very constantly that gave us everything. Sometimes you got three, four, five, six jobs ongoing with the same company. Um, but we got those, you know, I would say that give us work and preferable work. It's kind of like a 20 of them. Not not very constant like the others. But they always checking on us and stuff like that. Some of uh, some of the company they they are the state. If mm -hmm. they got something here, they give the opportunity to get on. Yeah. If they don't, like we we'll, we'll, we don't do it. But locally, like around ten, man, around ten, we can uh, we can do our living here with uh, with this great partnership. No, that's awesome. Yeah. So I always tell everybody, like, if you're gonna get into commercial, the benefit is two things. One bigger contract values. Cause I, I have a lot of residential guys that we do estimating for and stuff. I'm like, get into commercial. Oh no, but I've never, you know, I'd rather just get my, my 50% deposit up front and, you know, do these little contracts. I'm like, no, 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 forget about that. Take a chance on yourself, get into commercial. And instead of the same work that you're doing that you'll do in three weeks or two weeks, they'll give you six months to do with the same right. crews. And yeah, you got to finance it. You could get a credit line. You can use some of your capital, however you do it. And you get paid, you know, 30 days after your payment application, but you're getting a $500,000 contract. That's more than what you did last year with one deal. And then yeah. not only that, so it's two things. One is a bigger contract. And two, that guy, you probably have a 90% chance of getting another job from him. Maybe not next month, but the, th the second month or the third month. And you just keep bidding. And I, and I talk about this thing called bidding sprints, where like, like when you want to break in with a client, you don't want to bid one, you know, this month and then three months later, bid the next job for them. You want to find your five to 10 guys that you want to invest in. And then you bid other jobs. Boom, 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 boom. And maybe you don't hit the first three or maybe not even the first five because they still have to win the job sometimes. But eventually, since they keep seeing your name and you pass by their office and you're building that relationship, they're eventually going to be like, all right, let me give you a shot. Boom. You knock it out of the park. Then you got that 90% chance of getting the next job. Boom. Knock it out of the park. Knock it out of the park. Boom, boom, boom. And then eventually you escalate your price. You don't have to do it. Well, I tell I tell you exactly what what's uh, what's happening in my uh, in our trade, and you know this is true. When we're talking about like um, uh, electrical, plumbing, uh, roofing, 
Mm -hmm. you, you have a very well instructed uh, companies out there that, that they have like one, two, three, four, five estimators. Uh, they 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 have accountants. They have everything. It's a it's a very easy way to uh, uh, to quote on a, on a commercial project. But mm -hmm. painting company, it's not a whole lot out there. They have this this sort of a facility of a. Uh, uh, get it the job from the plan, understand the plan. If you were estimated, like, for example, me, uh, there, there, a bunch of stuff like uh, my estimated, they have no idea. They get this square footage, but they're waiting for me to see, like, have you seen this? How do you, we, we charge this? So because I was able to sort of uh, uh, learn all the faces, I can help with the estimating. But it's not a, it's not every painting contractor that, that, that can do that. And yeah. for that, so like uh, uh, we always try to beat on the smaller jobs, like a twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars, and send a, a bunch estimate out there. Um, and as you said, and you're totally right. And um, this is my recommendation for whoever that's sort of starting and 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 uh, consistency uh, that, that you're gonna send like a, the beat just like we're saying, and they see your name, they see your name, they see your name, and when you you have a facility like this. Uh, you're going to be missed because you sent like a 10 proposals for this company, but it's not a whole lot of painting contractors that send that, that, that you got the same, same facility. So let's not lose. So what they end up doing then is kind of like, we got to give this guy something. Yeah. I mean, it's been beating our jobs, whatever, because um, this is our company as well. And in, in the beginning, um, we wish to send one, two, three, four, five estimates. Then we'll follow up and see. It's like there's two reasons that you're not feeding on the estimate. Number one, they have a profitable guy, and you, they they just using your, your number. Number two, you're too high, mm -hmm. and they, they don't even look at your uh, your, your estimate. Um, and and so they, you know, so so we follow up on on the fifth. But by the tenth estimate, if you don't hear anything from your side, we don't we just don't quote for you anymore. Yeah. Where, no. $20,000, $30,000 project, everybody keep working with us. Because, you know, the customer service, matter of fact, the customer service is pretty great uh, on our company. Mm -hmm. uh, Consider it as a quality. I'm not saying we're the best, but I can say we're better than 90% of the, the painting company that I've seen. <laughs> yeah, man, it's, uh, you know, we're, that, that, that's what we do. We're not hand mans. We're not, we're not, Carpenter, half a professional uh, drywall. This is a professional painting company. You know, they, that's what they do every day. And just so, so you, just, just so you guys know, Rodrigo, I met him when I was a superintendent. So one of my very first construction jobs, uh, when I so I came from the architecture world into the construction side of things, and I didn't know anything, <laughs> like nothing. And Rodrigo and I, I got thrown into the fire as a superintendent. And Rodrigo was my first one of my first painting contractors, my subs. And he was so professional, so good. And this was before when he was at the other company with his partner. And he was like super customer service. He's like probably the only guy that would answer his phone all the time. And like, and we were doing a project for University of Miami, uh, the admissions office. We were doing uh, some other stuff. And then he actually became, I think it was my second estimating client ever. <laughs> this was back okay. in, I want to say 2016 or 2015 or something like that. And I had one painting contractor that I was doing bids on the side for. And then one day I, I actually went to lunch with him and he's like, oh my gosh, I'm so busy. I don't have time. I want to bid more jobs, but I don't have time. And I'm like, I know how to use the takeoff software. Can you, you know, I'll do it for you. And at that time I was so broke. <laughs> I didn't have $99 to buy the student version of Bluebeam <laughs> that he actually bought it for my brand new little baby company. I am builders. And I started doing all his takeoffs for him. Boom, 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 boom. And I think one of the first ones you won, one of the first jobs we did for you, right? In Miami lakes. Oh, in Miami lakes. Yeah. It was like this uh, whole strip mall with a bunch of buildings Yeah, and did the takeoff for him and he didn't trust me. So he did his own takeoff and he's like, Oh, we were off by like, out of thousands of, out of, I don't know, like out of hundreds or th thousands of square feet or something, we we're off by like a hundred or something. Like the difference was negligible. And, um, and, uh, you know, that, that, that worked out. And then, you know, I, obviously I went my way doing iron builders and he kind of went his way doing city painting. And now fast forward, what it's been almost like 10 years, almost. Yeah, I think almost has, long, man. Eight, long eight, time. 10 years. And I, I, um, <laughs> uh, man, I'm, 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 
very um, impressed how, how you're doing it. Uh, I'm not saying financially, um, you know, I can even, I don't even need to mention that. It's <laughs> like uh, uh, two, three years later, um, I called you and, and you say, oh, we have like a, a eight estimators on a company. And I was like, man, how how'd you get it? And I said, like, thanks, thanks, thanks to you. I said, thanks to me. Said, yeah, man, you, you bought my first software. And I was like, man, I didn't even remember that. But man, congratulations, man. I'm, Forgot I'm about a very that. big fan of you. You know, you know well. Yeah. Now we have 15 estimators. I have two senior estimators. I have our marketing team, our account managers. We have this new program that we launched about a year ago where we're doing estimating for a lot of our contractors, like on a subscription basis. So right. like in all these years, I, we started off doing estimating, like just per project, you know, as people needed it. But then I kept hearing like, how do I get leads? I need help leads. I need, I need help. How do I close? How do I do this? How do I do that? And there's this big challenge in the construction industry that there's no education. The, you can go to construction management school and they teach you how to click the buttons and all these guys graduate wanting $70,000 a year right out of school because they just have a bachelor's degree in construction management. Then they come to your office and they don't know anything. And then, uh, no offense to you guys that are doing construction management school, but it's the truth. <laughs> um, and then, and then you got like the guys like you that grew up in the trades and you're like, all right, I want to get better. I want to learn. All right, where do I learn? Oh, um, there's nowhere out there. There's nothing out there. How do I write a proposal? Oh, you can Google it, watch some YouTube videos. And then there's not really that many videos out there on this stuff. So it's like, there's nothing. So then as time passed, I'm like, I'm helping all these guys little in little pieces. But what if we made something that was like, like, let's train them. Let's train the, like the professional sales and construction and the construction management and the whole thing. So I made our, our contractors, our eight figure contractor Academy, where we're basically teaching everything that we talked about here, leads, estimating, everything I saw there. So I have like my, my leads in there, my leads training, estimating training. Uh, we're building out right now a construction management training. We're doing a software for uh, like a, basically like a pro core, but like that's going to be affordable for the people on our program. We're doing a leads. So we're, we're helping contractors with, with, with our lead service. So it's like, we're on a mission where we're, we call it our eight figure contractor movement. Cause we're on a mission to help contractors get to the eight figure mark. And some guys it's estimating, some guys it's training, some guys it's believing in con in construction and in, in the first place. So, but um, but that's kind of, and believe it or not, a lot of it did come from working with you in the beginning, because <laughs> who knows where we would have been if if you would have never had lunch with me that day and said, oh, I need uh, I need help. <laughs> yeah, let me let me circle back to you on that uh, real quick. Uh, for example. Um, the, the, what are the, the, the most people makes mistake nowadays then is this, you see, you mentioned like how, how you and I know each other for, for a long time. And people, sometimes people don't respect the, uh, uh, the process, uh, back in the days, back in the days, you, you, you kind of like, uh, thanks for the kind of words about my management stuff. But when you met me, I was already, uh, I was already a, a manager. Like I was a project manager and give you my customer service. And back in the days, that that time that you met me, I would. Th there's no way that I can perform on the field besides management. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but little more back. Let's say like another uh, eight years uh, before that. So we told it like 18 years. Um, I met project managers very young, uh, supervisors. So nowadays, they're my client. They yeah. they opening their own their own company yeah. and, and what people made a such mistake is uh, they go to the, the the work nowadays they they mess around um, they always on the phone but on the phone watching something that not even interest at all I remember like uh, uh, when people used to go to lunch or something I used to turn to the bucket of paint and reading the 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 description where to apply what is this what is that and the other people didn't want to learn. I still have a friends in business, a lot of them. They still perform on the field. Nothing against them. Like, it's a very good money. They have the crew, whatever. They, they have, like, a three, four guys um, uh, they make money on, and and, and they, they perform. Um, but at the same time, it's uh, I, 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 I took this step ahead to learn, like, uh, what I was going to apply, what, it, what I'm working with. And everybody on the, on the field, look at it. Uh, one time... There was a, this client and say the door hangers were, were very late and they hang the doors and the carpet was supposed to go to the next day. And it was kind of like a 43 doors in frame or something like that. And it was already like a, almost three o'clock in the afternoon. And, and he says like, uh, um, 
if I cancel the the, the copy guy, they they they're gonna give me a back charge, and you know how it goes. Like they're not gonna show, uh, they're gonna push me the schedule for another two weeks because they, they they're gonna give me excuses that he's gonna start yeah. another project. So I told him, I said, listen, you need this door frame painted for tomorrow. Say so yes, whatever. Say so it's impossible. But say go home when you come back. So I stayed from four o'clock in the afternoon until I swear I, until four o'clock in the morning. And that the same day I started like at six o'clock in the morning. Started like a, my day, like a go out on the you know the field or whatever. And when they come back, there was a group of electrician. There was a group of uh, 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 air conditioner. There was a group of uh, all little traders all there, and 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 they saw uh, how I was. Release the, the yeah the stress <laughs> on on a contract. When these people, this group of people, I still meet them in Miami. I still meet them everywhere. Man, they gave me the respect because my hard work that day. They didn't give me the respect because the lies I tell, the the the, the advantage that I take it in a, on a company or something. So this is exactly what it is. And then and and and, and then you grow, you grow, you grow. And yeah. these people always gonna talk to you about uh, what you did in the past. Yeah. And I'm sure that if it's a job that you can recommend, you would with a you know with a full mouth, whatever. But the thing is that that's what they, they don't understand. It's it's beginning like in a very, very, very tell, very tell. And then and then it's the consequence of your uh, of your work. Yeah. Um, and yeah, man, and it's uh um it goes around and then it's surprise because you, you call it each other, you know each other like for 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 15 uh, uh 12 years. And this is, uh, and uh, I'm very happy to tell you that I don't have not even twenty dollars in advertising. When the people knew that I was out there doing business, a lot of people uh, called me. And the first week of a uh, first week of our company, I started painting. I, I painted for five days, and I got so much phone calls for for jobs that people say, "Listen, one of my friends told me that, that you opened the company. You used to be great. You used to be this. I wanna, I wanna do business with you." And nice. in the fifth the day, I never painted anymore in my life. <laughs> I, I can't. Never. Yeah. For so you, so you were, so you were a painter first, right? You mm -hmm. were in the trenches, getting yes. dirty, and then you became a manager as soon as you opened up your company because you got so much work that you started running the cruise, right? Correct. Well, I was a painter. Then they gave me opportunity to be a, a, a subcontract. contract. And then, and then the company that I used to work for, the, they they saw that it, that I could be very helpful in the company. So yeah, and you then know, they gave me the management. The, the story of what you said about working overnight from four p.m. to four a.m. is it's um those are the things that like I always I like to relate the job sites. It's almost like when you're in battle because <laughs> it's like there's so many things going on. It's dangerous. There's like, like, you know, there's always emergencies, there's always rushes, there's always there's there's a lot of stuff going on at the same time. And in construction, there's a lot of trials and tribulations. And where you're going to win your next contracts is in like when your GC needs you or when your architect needs you or when your owner's rep needs you. If you show up, they're like, man, I can count on that guy. That guy will show up when I need him. I've had scenarios not as crazy as that, because that's pretty hardcore. But I've had scenarios where, like, that you know, you're like, I had one time I, I was doing a, a project for a company called Fast Track, and they 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 hadn't dried in the roof, so the, so I we kept telling them, don't hang the drywall yet, don't put the insulation yet, because you're you're not dried in yet. And then they had over a weekend a torrential downpour, destroyed all the drywall and the insulation. So we basically had to come back and strip everything out, demo everything, and redo it. And I could have been like screw these guys. <laughs> I'm going to make a lot of money right now. But I was like, you know what, during this trial, let me show them what we got. And I came in and we basically did it at cost. We made it, we made no money. Right. We did it on tickets, uh, time and materials, all that, but we did it at cost. And they were super happy because when they needed us, we were there. So like when your guys needed you that overnight thing that nobody does that. So if you, if you're that guy that gets ahead of schedule and you're like, you show them that when they need you, you're there. They almost owe you, and they'll never use somebody else because they can't trust that somebody else will do the same thing. So that's yeah. that's that's amazing. That's amazing. Uh, and well, and we did it a number of times, and then there was a there was myself. I got a, I got a ten thousand stories about this. You know, like I did just the jobs for property manager that one of my employees didn't show up on a Saturday. He was the only one how to spray like a uh, scoff mask. It's uh, you know, it's imitation of a uh, uh, electrostatic paint. You got to be knowledgeable how to how to spray those things. And and he was very worried because on Monday he needs those those elevator doors back uh, uh, done. 
And I called him and said, listen, we need by Monday. He said, yes. And I said, don't worry. About it. Like, we'll, we'll, we'll go, I'll go over there tonight. And it was Saturday night. I was diving the whole day. When I get out of the water, I saw my phone that was blowing. And say, you know, it was uh, uh, the owner of the company that I used to work for. Uh, the, the, the supervisor called me three, four times. And I think everything was under control. And mm-hmm. man, you got no idea. That was the, this is the worst feeling uh, ever. And as a contractor nowadays, if I count on two individuals to finish a project and they don't show up, the and you know better, this is the worst feeling ever. And I don't want this to my clients. When my clients tell me, I need to finish this and I don't know how am I going to do it. I could simply say, I told you before. I'll take care of this. No, man, I partnered up with these people. I was like, let's find a way. What do you need? Yeah. I say, listen, man, I, I can uh, I can have a, a carpenter overnight. He's gonna he's gonna work it under my my liability. I know he has some, but he's not gonna have time to set up all the paperwork with you. Yeah. Um, oh, can you bring it? I say, yes, hold on a second. Let me see if I can help. So it's a number of reasons for why we 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 got a lot of work. And I'm very proud of my team for for the most part. Like uh actually for, for everything they do, you know, the the there's a bunch of uh, uh, people working with us. They they have the same feeling, the same mentality of a take care of the customer. And as I said, man, it's no such a thing as uh, you don't know. You, you, and, and maybe you promise your client how you're going to do this. And now they, they're they not going to be able to finish it because a couple of mistakes on trades that they hire. Mm-hmm. And we're here to help, man. You know, so. Yeah, the worst thing when I was a superintendent is one guy doesn't show up or they're delayed. And you usually have like a two week outlook. So you already have your next two weeks planned. And then that guy messes up two or three days and you got to move back everybody. And so basically you got to keep reworking the schedule over and over and over. So whenever, whenever somebody would actually like, all right, let's put the gloves on, let's roll up the sleeves and let's get the work done. That's like a, that's like a refreshing. It's like a, oh, man, I could trust this guy. And those are the guys like you that the superintendents, when their PMs ask them, Hey, who do you want? Oh, I want Rodrigo. Not city painting. I want Rodrigo. Yep. Right. Um, my when I was in the dry in commercial drywall, my clients would ask for Daniel. They wouldn't Daniel and the team. And and it's funny because a lot of times they don't even know the company name. They just what's the company right. name? Oh, boom. And they they just put on the paperwork. But they're hiring you. I have a colleague of mine. He used to work. I don't know if you remember Titus Construction. They actually went bankrupt. I don't know if you ever, if you ever if you ever. But anyways. And the same people that I think it is. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. So they went, They those guys went bankrupt, but he he was a project executive. And while they were having a lot of trouble and they had like a legal issues, he was actually running the whole ship by himself. Like the owners were kind of checked out dealing with all this crap and he was running it. So everybody knew him as the face. Like they actually thought he was the owner and because they didn't even realize it wasn't him. So when they had started defaulting on all their crap, they were going to him. He's like, I'm not even the owner. Because, but they just assumed he was because they knew they knew him, they knew him, they knew him, you know. So, so in construction, like a few takeaways from that I've gotten from you, you know, I, I, I like to listen and learn from the guys that are in the trenches doing it. So, the number one thing that I've actually heard from you is you got to work hard and be knowledgeable, right? So, you got to advance your skills. Number two, it sounds like a lot of what you've done is put your ego to the side and let me be selfless and help them, right? That's a, that's a big one. one. The, the most priority in my, in my concept. And then three, it sounds like you've had a lot of ups and downs and you just close, put your head down and just move forward and just overcame them. And now you're here doing $8 million, having, you know, your next year and a half or two already booked. Uh, not a lot of construction companies or people in the industry can say, you know, I got work lined up that I, I know how much money I'm going to make in 12 months from now, everybody's always like, Oh, I got a job right now, but I don't know where I'm going to be in two months. Cause they're always stressing on a mission. Right. Right. Yeah, man. Um, I, um, also want to uh, bring in another point and, you know, uh, you keep saying that we, we showed like a $8 million, $8 million in business. I just want to, uh, kind of like, a uh, tell, tell everyone that don't understand the commercial, uh, jobs. Uh, as you say, uh, Danny, uh, like, uh, for example, one sale of uh, electrical job that can go from two hundred to five hundred thousand dollars easy. Mm-hmm. And if you got that budget, the painting is going to be what, like sixty thousand, maybe. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So the numbers itself for us is very high. 
and we're very we're very happy with the profit today as well. So it's like, a, for example, um, uh, on um, on the epoxy business, you sell like easily um, a job for for twenty four thousand dollars, mm-hmm. but then you gotta buy a hundred thousand dollars in equipment, like a big sanders, whatever. How long that is gonna pay for your equipment? Maybe you got one job that that will pay for the equipment. Man, who knows? But it, you know, um, and then you're gonna get like the material. The material came up like a ten thousand dollars. For a twenty-four thousand dollars job for Bain, maybe, maybe if the the the, the material comes up like a four thousand dollars, we're talking about a lot, you know, at least in yeah. commercial. Yeah, uh, yeah. And at least in what I do, I'm not talking about those big HOA jobs that people come bidding very low. And and it's a it's a decision that you got to make, like, or, or you make um a thousand dollars with a pallet of paint. Or you make a thousand dollars with one gallon of paint. That's yeah. what we do. We do a thousand dollars with a one gallon of paint. One gallon of paint can can pay six, seven dollars, and that's what yeah. we that's what we dedicate uh, our quality uh, uh, and, and our purpose for 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 customer service like that. You know. And the next step is framing and drywall. <laughs> so so we are gonna so um so we're gonna be teaching Rodrigo's team. Uh, we're going to be adding on since they're already doing all these contracts. It's going to be an easy jump to get their client to add their framing and drywall, which they have good crews and everything, but they don't really have their team, their estimating team and all that equipped to estimate on a volume basis. So we're actually going to teach them our our ninja tricks on how to do framing and drywall. So hopefully this time next year, maybe the following year, we'll be talking and you'll be at 16 or 20 million. And you're going to say, hopefully, oh, the reason is because we added drywall and we doubled our sales. <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Uh, we got a client that uh, are bagging us to, 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 to give you this shot. And every construction company knows, and I believe and no one that's going to watch it is going to disagree. If you, if, you, if you have like this a, a good quality painting company and if you have like a a, a, a drywall partition on that company, man, the job is yours because yeah. dealing with those two trades, it's always a fight. This is a drywall. No, this is the painting. This is the run. This is a roller mark. And now I got to skim yeah. the walls. Yeah, so you know how it goes. It's bidding packages. And I have a bunch of videos that I'm always talking about bidding packages. You bid the package, the GC, you get, you give them a better price. They mm. want, it's easy for them to manage instead of managing three or four or five different trades. They manage one company, you know, it's, it's the best. Everybody's a win-win. So that's, that's awesome. And, and this is, this is how we went from 1.8 to $3.2 million sales because I increased the waterproofing and the, and the stucco. And, and it was amazing. Of course, eventually the painting was way more and yeah. it was 2.5, whatever, but the, the rest of the, it was the dry, uh, the, the stucco. Um, if we add the drywall, you told it right. No, no yeah, and you know, and, and you know what happens? Twenty minutes, easy. No, of course. And you know what happens? It's not just that you're adding drywall to your contracts. It's that the people will hire you only because you're doing the whole thing. So yeah. they're just gonna be like, "Oh, I'll never use anybody else." Let me just boom, 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 boom. Let me just give you all my work. I've been on the GC side, and it it sucks when you have fifteen or twenty people. 15 or 20 payment applica- payment applications, 15 or 20 change orders to deal with, 15 or 20 supervisors, 50 th- 15 or 20 people crying that they haven't gotten their checks yet. Blah, blah, you know, it's like, you know, plus on all the jobs, you know, times all the jobs we have at the same time. So it's nice when you could deal with one company and it's like, you know, especially when they do things like working late at night, helping you advance your schedule, being there when you need them. That's that's really where the game is at. So Yeah, I agree. A thousand percent. So I'm I'm very grateful that you came on the on this call with uh with uh with me and and my eight figure team. Um, this is uh you know I've learned a bunch of stuff from you and I hope I keep learning. And uh, I'm gonna put uh, I'm gonna put a link to Rodrigo's website. So if anybody is in South Florida or I don't know if you are willing to travel across the country, but we do have a lot of GCs and subs nationwide. If uh if you do want to reach out to Rodrigo and his team, I'm, I'm going to put a link in the description uh, for City uh, Painting and Waterproofing. So you can check them out, maybe give them a couple bid invites and see if uh, maybe you guys can do business together. So Right. And But uh, um, besides this, I, I actually love to help people. Uh, you know, I, I've been helped before. Um, I learned how to do estimating because I asked one estimator to come to my house and I would have paid him to teach me. And he says, listen, man, the way you want to learn, it's a, it's a pleasure to me to teach you. 
And whoever have like a personal question as far as like any issue on the pain, I'm not saying like uh, I'm gonna boom boom respond the 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 phone immediately, but feel free to send me some sort of a question or something. I'm here to help, you know. So I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah a lot of a lot, believe it or not, a lot of contractors I work with would benefit from not just hearing it from me, but hearing it from guys like you that are. I was in the trenches. Now you're still in the trenches. <laughs> it's funny because I'm not in the trenches like doing construction work but I'm still kind of in the trenches because a lot of my clients are and I'm advising them and we're doing their estimating and we're doing their leads. So we're still, we're still doing stuff, you know? And it's, it's, it's all, it's all, it's pretty cool because I get to learn from you and I get to learn from all, all of them. Like, Hmm, these guys are doing this and these guys are doing this. And then like, because I work with so many people and I get, to, I get to talk to so many people, I get to see what everybody's doing that we get to basically package up all the strategies that are working right now and, you know, teach our team and teach everybody. So you know, no, um, you you build a great system, and I, <laughs> you know, I'm very happy for you. Uh, the, the same way, I learned a lot from you, a lot. Like, you know, um, and watch a couple of a bunch of videos from you before, and I recommend everybody to watch because uh, and the reality then, I would say at least it on my three. I'm not speaking for any other three, three and and, and other, uh, but nobody has no idea what commercial uh construction is and you know like for at least like a lot of painters uh um like for example whoever got to work let's say uh, uh people um get the license or or something and put a crew together but the crew itself they always going to be a subcontract because they have no idea what cash flow what uh on uh, the big liabilities uh, a premium uh, liability be bonded. They have no idea what that is. And, you know, I give a tip to everybody learn. Uh, and it, it's your, your, your videos are very, very, very helpful. Very helpful for, for whoever wants to join this, uh, this, uh, this, this, this way, which is the commercial trade. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think commercial is, it's like the secret to like, it's, like I've seen people that, that, you know, started at zero. It's, it's like the best, one of the best industries that you can make the most money, the fast. I mean, it is very stressful and all that, but it's the most lucrative. I've seen immigrants with and without their documentation that they figured it out and they've built million dollar companies. And I've yeah. seen guys that have no education. They've been in the trades. They've, I've even seen people that have never done construction in their life, but they happen to be just business minded and they've just executed and they just built, you know, big companies. So so I want, you know, congratulations to everything you've done. And I'm, I'm grateful that you've, um, you know, you're here teaching our, our people, you know, and um, so let's, uh, let's end with that. And if any of you guys want to reach out to Rodrigo, I'm going to put his uh, link to his website. I'm sure his email will be there. If you guys want to reach out to him, he's, you know, very good friend of mine. I could vouch hundred percent for him. He was there in the beginning when I was, I didn't even know anything. <laughs> and, uh, and now, you know, we've all, we've advanced our careers and, you know, so this is one of my, uh, one of my brothers, I would say, cause it's been a long time and, and, you know, he's, he's a very good friend of mine. So definitely, uh, if you want to work with him, I definitely vouch for him. And, um, if you guys want to work with us, we're here to help you with estimating with leads with anything you got. And, uh, I really, you know, thank you for watching this podcast. And if you need anything, we're here to help you. All right. Thank you so much for your time. And I appreciate it. All right, my brother. Anytime.